Loyalty to Rangers is what binds us. And together, we are stronger. Launching for the 2021 season, the MyJers membership programme is a new way to get even closer to the club you love. It's the one place where you can access benefits like ticketing priority, club discounts and exclusive competitions and experiences. There's even a limited edition welcome gift when you join. Visit rangers.co.uk slash myjers to join today. Always Rangers, always loyal, always rewarded. Jones delivers. Just brace yourself. Rangers are coming. Rangers, Rangers, easy, okay. Okay. Well, the fans are very strong. You know, we've got a battle fever on, but the fans are Rangers still with it. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode from our famous fan series on the Battle Fever podcast. Today, we're kind of merging two worlds, we're merging two sports. We have a professional golfer, Alistair for Scytheways, who is also a famous Rangers supporter. So, good afternoon, Alistair, how are you doing? Great, oh, um, thanks very much. Um, I'm doing absolutely fine. Uh, just about getting back into a bit of golf at the moment. Obviously, football's a wee bit away, I think, but uh, yeah. I was uh, hanging, hanging together. I know, I know. How have you found the lockdown? It's been all right, to be honest. Like, the hardest but we've got two young kids, 11 and eleven and 5, you know, so yeah, 11-year-old, she goes away to your room and does her schoolwork and all that, and they bother, but the, the five-year-old, he's, <laughs> he's climbing the walls, you know. <laughs> um, so I, um, obviously, we were, we were off the golf course for quite a while as well, which was, was tough, but so being being a coach, being self-employed, I'm um, just being, uh, you know, nothing I can really do uh, golf-wise, but we're hoping to get back. Depending on the on the announcement from the government, we might get back at the tail end of tail end of next week. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody just wants to be back back to some kind of normality of some uh, regard. You know, it's we, we 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 appreciate the dangers, but can I let's get some structure back to your day? <laughs> Hopefully, I I think I mean I think everybody everybody that's going to that's going to abide by you know, your two meters and your uh, and your safety measures. I think it's going to do it now. I think yeah. we're in it, and the people that don't, the people are just that, that don't. Um, you know, you walk down a an aisle in a supermarket, you know, going along the going along the arrows, and you've got four people walking towards <laughs> against the arrows. You know, if we're <laughs> going to do that, we're going to do that. I don't <laughs> like we're, much is going to change now, so hopefully things will start to, to settle down. And, and the good thing, the, the numbers are way down as well, yeah. particularly in Scotland. So fingers crossed for for uh, we're getting to get somewhere. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think we all echo that. Um, Obviously, we're going to talk about your, your upbringing, your influences in becoming a Rangers supporter, your memories following the club, um, etc. So, you're born in Glasgow. Whereabouts in Glasgow were you, were you brought up, Alistair? Uh, first few years, I was in, I was in uh, Crookston, just along the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just slightly further along the road, that, um, uh, and then Ralston towards Paisley. Yeah. Um, so, always, and I'm in Crookston now, so I'm just, just along the road from, uh, from my book, so it's nice and handy. Which is even worse when you can't go out and go and visit, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've been past my bike a few times recently. I've been out and about. There's a, there's a wee, a wee, uh, a wee route I can go on my, go on my bike. But uh, aye, it is. It's, I mean, it's, it's obviously very handy when the, when the games are on. But uh, yeah. I mean, we're all having a, a frustrating time just now. And by the looks of it, I mean, it's guess what? Who, you know, when we might actually get back to, to be able to go to a game. Aye, aye. Um, who were your who were your influences in and in like family life that led to you becoming a Rangers supporter? Well, I think like like, like most like most boys growing up, it's your it's your dad. You know, my dad went to he went to a lot of games. Um, had been had done that for years, and he's and his uh, his two brothers were the, were the same. So quite often you would it was it was the old uh, sitting in the car outside the pub where they had a few a few pints for and then and then taking along to the game. But no, I think you would. You would see, you know, I was seeing him at the old man heading out at maybe 12 o'clock on a Saturday or whatever and go, where are you going, where are you going? I'm only a wee boy, you know, I'm going to football. And it's like, can I come, can I come, can I? And eventually, so like, we'll take you to, take you to a game. And, and you know, sort of back then, I'm um, talking kind of early 80s, you didn't really, there wasn't a lot of football live on the telly. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, you're looking at cup finals and things like that. And obviously, when you're five year old, you're not seeing sports scene at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. So, yeah. Um, you didn't see an awful lot of football. Um, so, I was probably, I thought, I remember my first my first game, we, was, we were in the uh, um, enclosure. I think it was the East Enclosure, not up in the corner with the Daffy's back in the day. <laughs> um, and it was, it was I think, the I actually know it was we drew, I'm sure we drew one each and we we were playing either St Murn or Dunfermline. The only reason I know that is it was a team in black and white. I don't <laughs> think it was Newcastle. Right. So um and from then on it was like, right, can I come, can I come? And he would take me to, to to most of the games, um, apart from the Celtic games and Aberdeen games. Yeah. Um and but it really kinda of kicked in for me when obviously when, when Sooners came, what's that, eighty six, I would have been ten. So you you know you start to get an idea of what's going on then. I mean, at five or six year old, you don't know, you don't yeah. know an awful lot. But uh, started going to a lot of games then. Um, yeah, but the but it, the big bit was a uh, about a year to nineteen eighty start yeah eighty eighty nine season. Uh, um, I was very fortunate, and I managed to uh, be a ball boy for three seasons. <laughs> which was amazing, you know. I mean, twelve year olds, you know, running out the tunnel every uh, every second Saturday, you know, and it was just brilliant, man. I mean, it was incredible. You get you run among the players all the time. You're right down at the end of the tunnel. Um, it was the old uh, the old layout. Went behind the enclosures. Went behind the enclosures when they get there. was a big kind of there was a, a kind of uh, an ash training bit where a lot of players warmed up there warmed as up. well and. So you were down there mixing with the, the guys, walking through the front door for every, every game, you know, I mean, right. even, even now, if I'm a 44, I don't know how many times I've walked through the through that front door, but it still get it still gives you that wee right. kind of hairs in the back of the neck, you know, it's such a such a, a, a great experience, such an iconic uh, building, you know, so to be doing that at 12 and 13 year old was was, uh, was phenomenal, and, and that's where it all really kind of, uh, you know, kicked in. I remember a lot of, you know, a few games of the biggest game I remember as a kid was the, the League Cup final when Ali scored the, the hat trick. Yeah. Uh, 3 2. Um, that's probably one of my earlier, earliest kind of memories apart from going to the odd, you know, game. Again, that's where you had a, a game that was live in the telly. It was very, really, that, that didn't happen yeah. an awful lot back then, but that's how it all, uh, it all started. It's 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 amazing though because, I mean, it's it's like maybe not on a great the same scale, but it's like kids growing up nowadays, or certainly since two thousand and twelve when Rangers won there, as successful as what I mean I grew up in the nineties, so I grew up with nine in a row, Rangers were just kings to me then, you know. So yeah. for kids growing up two thousand twelve, obviously when you grew up, it must have been Greg that was in charge, aye. And it was it was Greg and then then Jock Wallace. Um, and we won the really that. Spell. We won the really that successful. You know, I think Gregory won two cups. Jock mm-hmm. Wallace kind of led us. Uh, there's an argument if Jock Wallace got the same money that, that Sunus got, then maybe Jock could have done something again. But it wasn't really until Sunus came in and you said you were ten that really Rangers did start to kind of mark themselves back at the top. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a it was a huge a huge thing. I mean, I was gonna can can remember the you know first hearing of the, the Graham Sunnis uh, arrival when it was again. There's no Sky Sports news. There's no social media yeah. and things like that. It was actually it was like on the it was on the 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 news and the telly when you first hear it. You know, yeah. or maybe you, you pick up a newspaper. Um, but yeah, you just felt something. This is even as a kid, you felt wait a minute. This is a, a seriously big, seriously big name. Yeah. And uh, and he obviously he came in and it was just you know you're saying you grew up you know grew up in the nineties so you just kind of yeah from you know, as soon as won the league in his first year obviously they won it the next year and then next thing it was just phenomenal from then yeah. and you almost just expected it but you're right you know we're going back to the, the kind of early to mid eighties just before that we were finishing like fifth in the league and things like that mm-hmm. you know and you you look at it now and you think even if Rangers were rotten. You're still going to no. You're still not going to finish fifth in the league, <laughs> so it's incredible. But at that time, you also had. I mean, Aberdeen were winning in, in Europe, and the United were were uh, were getting to uh, they were in the UEFA Cup final. Yeah, you know what, 1985 or something like that. So you're beating Barcelona and things like that. So yeah, it's a totally different um, environment, and that changed very quickly. Obviously, when when Rangers and Celtic started spending um, some serious serious cash. 
mm -hmm. uh, compared to compared to the rest. Um, but it's great. It's interesting, you, you know, talking about the kids coming in now, and obviously since two thousand twelve, we've been been all through all sorts of stuff and playing in the bottom, you know, bottom wood division thing, things like that. And they're sort of standard in the park. We know where we are, and the same. But you know, the place is me full every every yep. week. Yep. You know, so the kids are still kids are still coming. You know, uh, which, is, I, which is brilliant. Talking to one of my, my pals, wee cousins at one of the games when we were in the third division, and he's Barcelona daft as well, right? He's just Messi, he's just king to him. Um, and, I, and he couldn't believe that I had seen Messi actually play at Ibrox. Do you know what I mean? And, he, and he's like, how, how did Messi play here? I says, well, Rangers have always played against East Stirling, you know. I know. <laughs> Rangers are a huge club. Um, and by so, the way, he did nothing when he played here. Exactly. Uh, he did, he, David Weir shackled him that night. <laughs> That's right, he was still in David Weir's back pocket. <laughs> um, Jeff, Jeff Holmes, I don't know if you heard it, but Jeff Holmes told us a great story when Sunis came in. Jim White took Jeff Holmes to meet Sunis before it was actually announced. Sunis was coming a walk around Ibrox before it was actually announced. And it, it, kind of Jim White says to him, look, see if you need to know anything about Rangers. Ask Jeff Holmes here. He's a big supporter or whatever. So Jeff kind of turned around and said, well, I don't know everything, but I'm a supporter. He said, so I've, mm -hmm. I, I've got a good cage on the, on the fans. And um, he turned around and says, do you think Rangers would ever say, do you think any Rangers fan would ever accept me signing a Catholic? He says, I actually don't think they would bother. He says, but just don't sign Morris Johnson. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Six months later or whatever, yes. <laughs> Morris Johnson came in. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> so, so, you know, it's just mad. But uh, what, what were I your thoughts on, on Morris Johnson? At the time, just I thought it was an April Fool. To be honest. Right. I mean, I said that was, for what you could go for, what would that be, 1989 or something? I'm only 13 years old. So it was like, um, then I quite get the whole, you know, everything about it. But uh, oh, it broke down massive barriers. I mean, I think there's been there's been a lot to say. I always said there was, a, to a certain extent, there was a signing policy. I don't know. Just to, you know, there was definitely where, where um, you know, Catholics had played for Rangers before Morris Johnson. Was, you know, I think a lot of people forget that. I mean, that's yeah. a, that's a fight. I mean, it was John Spencer off the top of my head, um, and there was uh, there was definitely a lot, a, a good few more before that. Um, but that was obviously the high profile thing. But the biggest thing about it was, I mean, there's no doubt about. It. I mean, as soon as you can say all he likes, it was a football decision, etc. But it was to get one up over Celtic as yep. well. I mean, it yep. massively the fact that he was paraded a few weeks before with a Celtic strip on. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and then obviously to, to go and do that. But it, that changed, you know, a load of things. We don't even. I mean, I've never been never been bothered about it. You never cross my mind anyway. But you look, you watch it now, and we, we don't no idea what Robertson you know, or the players it's are. We don't care. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, we don't. Uh, I think you're in the minority now. If you come on the part and don't cross yourself, I, know. I mean, it does. It absolutely doesn't matter. Um, but Mo Johnson was a great player. He was a great player, and I mean, I and I was uh, when back in my ball boy days. I was on the on the track at the behind the goals at the at the Coburn when he scored that last minute goal against Celtic and it was just incredible. I mean, oh man. Uh, I mean for for a guy who was a you know, but obviously born and bred Celtic supporter I played for him and he went bananas when he when he scored that goal, you know, and um but it's it's you look back now, he's welcome at Ibrox any time, but you don't, I don't think he's welcome across okay. the city. So um I think it's yeah, fans of other clubs Arsenal, that make many a thing of Rangers aye. signings, religions, etc. I don't think yeah. Rangers fans are actually policy as long as you go there and pull an apple of jersey and, and get a hundred percent. That's all we ask, you know. Yeah, there may well have been a, a kind of to a certain extent down the years, but you know things move on and and the world changes, yeah. and uh, you know we don't really couldn't, couldn't care. Well, uh, as you say, they're, they're absolutely bang on. It's as long as they come on, players come in and, and they give they give everything for the. For the badge, that's all that. That's all that matters. Yeah. So your your ball boy days, obviously, you you, you would have been rubbing shoulders with Butcher, Chris Woods, Graham yeah. Sunnis himself, uh, Morris Johnson touched upon. Any stories for any any of the guys when you are kind of close up close with them? Yeah, it was, there was some guys would you would always find some guys would would you know, we were always kind of kind of down the tunnel. Um, so if you went down the tunnel from the pitch. The ball boys were kind of facing you, but um, so the the guys that were out, uh, 
doing this, um, who were going to be on the track behind the goals at either end, were out for the warm up, and other guys were just mind going down the tunnel. And yeah. Some guys would speak to you, some guys would would uh, would just go straight by you, very focused or yeah. rude or whatever, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, no, there was the generally yes, you found the the captain would always speak to you. So whether that was uh, Butcher when when I first started, and then it was at Chagoth. Um, mm. Most of the English guys were always, Mark Walters was always, was always coming have a chat. Um, Chris Woods would would have a quick hello. A lot of the Scottish guys would just head down straight and straight back into the dressing room. Mm. Um, I said Butcher was good. Woods would always have a chat. Goff was always guys, how you doing, etc. Ray Wilkins, as you can imagine, gentleman. Yeah. Um, soon as not really, he was pretty pretty focused. But uh, there was two two quite good good stories. There was. So you think things can you know, obviously different things happen now in the different formats at times, different dressing rooms and everything. Uh, you know, obviously, different uh, layout, completely different layout down the tunnel now. Mm-hmm. We were standing, uh, it was an old, uh, an old firm game. I think it was uh, the, I think it was the one we beat them 5 1. It was either 5 1 or 4 1. I know we beat them 5 1 in August, 4 1 at New Year. Um, and we were standing there. I'm standing there, but I've got, I've got two. Two footballs and one of the other uh, ball boys had two footballs. So the players had only been out for the warm up, but then they come back into the dressing room and uh, get themselves ready. And they still came out onto the park with a couple of balls, even just for a couple of minutes before kickoff. So I'm standing with a couple of balls, and so was one of the other uh, ball boys. And so the Rangers team came out first, standing down the tunnel, uh, waiting for the Celtic team to come out. So the two of them to come out together and, and let. Chris Woods and one of the other players took a took a couple of balls off the, uh, the, the one of the ball boys and and Ian Ferguson comes to me and says, "Are they for them?" I said, "Aye." So he says, "Give us them." <laughs> and as I said back then, you had the the you know behind the enclosures. This that was like a whole open as an ash ash kind of track almost like the police horses and things like that used to used to be. Um, uh, Sitting down there, and so you basically had nothing between the tunnel and like the end of each enclosure, and they just took the balls and they booted them away down to the other end of the <laughs> enclosure. So Rangers players come out onto the park with two or three balls, kicking about. Chris Woods was getting getting me shots kicked into him to catch the ball, and so the players are running about with nothing <laughs> for a couple of minutes. Um, but I think one of my one of my favourite games, you know, just which was a, a, again quite a good wee story as well. I was. It was in 1991 when we, we beat Aberdeen in the last game of the season. Yeah. And obviously it was a you know, huge, huge game. And we were, we, you would always have eight ball boys um, got on, if you like, would be, you know, so two behind each goal, two at the enclosure side and two at the, at the government stand side. So we turned up, and honestly, we were down there at like 10, because there was maybe 12 of you, mm-hmm. so just in case folk didn't turn up. And honestly, we were down at Ibox at like 10 o'clock in the morning to make sure we were, because it was first come, first served, to make sure we weren't, uh, we weren't a reserve, if you like, you know, we weren't a sub. So I was due to be over at the, the govern stand side. And as I said, the, the two boys would be behind the goals for the game, would be out for the warm-up just to kick the balls back. And the, the Aberdeen fans had the hole at the bottom of the Brimlin. And... Uh, I said, this was 91, so I'd be now be 15 by this time. And there was a younger, two younger boys that were behind the goals at the, at the Brumlin. And they came back in from the from the warm-up with their faces, like, honestly, as white as a sheet from the, or the stick they'd been getting through behind the goals and just it was bedlam from the Aberdeen fans. And uh, the guy that was running the, the ball boys, uh, a guy called Bill Denny, a great old guy, grumpy old guy, but he was growing with us. And he says, right, he says, you, you two will need to change. So he switched me from the from the govern over to the Brooklyn behind the behind the goals. <laughs> and uh, it, you know, it, was, it was a bit scary at the time, obviously, but I looked back and it was, the game was on, I think it was on that BBC Scotland channel. Or, I watched I it. Like, so, go, Aye. Aye. so there's, when Haitley taps in the second goal, it says there's a, you can see the ball boy in the, on the track, obviously going going bananas, <laughs> and that that's me just sort of, just a bit busting out my tracksuit by that time. Um, if, it's just going mental, and then but of course Haley ran across because all the Rangers fans were, were you know, the Rangers fans in the top of the room, and yeah. Aberdeen were just across the bottom. And what you don't see is there's about ten Aberdeen fans got onto the track, 
at that point, and if it wasn't for a policewoman, I would have got because I'd always say I'm going mental, and there was a wee policewoman that saved me from an absolute tank in that day of Aberdeen fans. But what I mean, what a day that was. Um, for me, that that was one a day that you look back on that really kind of summed up the the kind of Walter Smith and and that, and then we went on and went on and carried on to nine row at that point. Aye. But the you know the, the, you look at Bomber couldn't he walk the day before. Just played the game somehow, fell down after about an hour. He, Tam Cow went off with a broken, a broken leg. And the mm-hmm. McCoys came on, his backside was the size of a house. He came on as a sub, he'd been injured. Reed Japan wasn't he fit, came on as a sub. And it, it, the Gary Stevens, I think, ended up at centre half. He'd been at right back and then the left back. Terry Hullock ended up in the in the defence. Backman ended up in the defence. It was absolutely all over the shop, but they still found a way of getting, getting over the line. And getting it done, and, and that was obviously the the real one. I got a big uh, Haley with the oh, he was, that header. Phenomenal. That was but unreal that day. Haley was like, that. I mean, and I hate people calling him a battering ram because he was a battering ram, but he was a great football player. He wasn't he just oh, hustle and bustle, you know. He was a great football aye. player. That day summed him up. Any time he never got the mm-hmm. ball, he made sure McLeish and Miller knew. That's right. They were in a game. Do you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. that's that's kind of that's part. Of, I, I suppose well, he made, that's he made sure. Yeah, he made sure the goalkeeper knew all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Stevens floated a floated a cross in uh, uh, early doors and, and Haley's flat. And the thing, the thing is, you see Haley now; he's built like a he's built like a skill, <laughs> you know. And you think, what well, you think the way he used to, you know, knock seven and a half about. Well, uh, well, just shows David, you, you know. What David, a David Robertson tells us that obviously he played for Aberdeen that day, and he told us when he joined, Haley asked him, "What happened to that young goalkeeper?" And he said, and, and Robertson said, "You ruined his career. <laughs> he's gone after that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's never, never been seen he's never come out of the house since no, he's still hiding uh, obviously going into the, the early 90s you were up, oh, must have had an interest in golf as well because I think you turned you turned pro in 98 mm-hmm. yeah uh, so how easy yeah. did you find it getting to games etc you know because obviously that must take a lot of time for yeah. to practice such a, a, a skill you know mm-hmm. um, yeah but I would before when I turned once I turned pro, really the only thing that would that would, that would stop me going to games was if I was playing in a competition. Yeah. You know, I, I would, I would, I've, I'd always and and nowadays as I mean, it's still do the same now. I still work round that I'm basically not doing anything unless I'm if I'm playing if I was playing a tournament, then absolutely of course I'd miss the miss the games. But yeah. I wouldn't be doing anything else. I'd never never put anything. I don't think above going to going to the football. Um, mm-hmm. When I was travelling, once I started playing on tour, which was in 2000, um, I, obviously if I was away, away from home and um, and you, you don't, you, you don't, you know, and miss, missing the games. So when, I, when I was, and at that point, actually, because I was travelling quite a lot, uh, I mean, I was travelling for the most part of 15 years, um, I ended up going to what I started doing was when I came home, uh, if I was a week off or I missed the cut or things like that, yeah, I would, uh, I was going home away, you know, I was going to away European games, I was going yeah. to, I was going to play to Rodri, I was going to, you name it, um, all the away games if I was if I was at home and because um, I always say missed it when I was when I was away. But once I once I I'd, once I was growing the the ball boy track, I was uh, I got my season ticket and been a season ticket holder ever ever since. Definitely used not always the same seat, but we've had a uh, we've had a season ticket ever since. Um, so you know, the football. I mean, my wife knows that, my family know that. that if, when Rangers are, at, you know, nowadays I just go to home games, but yeah. when, or cup finals, etc. As well, but you know, there's there's no discussion. You know, I just then it was the same when I was travelling. So as soon as I was home, if Rangers were Rangers were playing, I was um, and going, you know, make sure I was always always at the games. Yeah, um, we we were going on obviously in the early nineties, going towards uh, nine in a row. Mm-hmm. We had, I mean, don't get, I mean, I was born ninety one, so. <laughs> For myself, really, Gascoigne, Loudrop, McCoy, I mean, McCoy's my hero. They guys really were the ones that kind of grabbed me and, and up there, blue nose ever since. But for yourself being a wee bit older, what light was the excitement around the kind of Paul Gascoigne? Obviously, world superstar, global icon. Yeah. You know, for, yeah. for somebody a wee bit older that maybe appreciate it, how, how, how does it feel? Oh, phenomenal. 
for an all I knew, I think one of the you, you, the times you, you didn't realise how good the other players were because you had guys like Casco and Alain drop them. Yeah. We go along a game, um, you know, a Premier League game against one of the lower teams, and you're maybe winning four nothing after after an hour, you know, and then Gasco and maybe go off, and then ten minutes later Alain drop would go off, and it was like you almost felt as if it was. Well, obviously, the players are going through the motions a wee bit for the for the next wee while, you know. Yeah. It four nothing up, it's, you know, human nature. But when they went off, it's like, oh, almost like maybe they'll go up the road now. Right. Um, you didn't realise how good the other ones were, and it, and it was like, like so when after they were away, and um, and then I realised what a player George Halberts was. Right. It was like because he was playing with them, and it's just like because they were that they were that good. Um, and then, of course, yeah, then the players that were, you know, that were in the penalty box. I mean, McCoy used to obviously um, getting, you know, service from from these guys must have been. When I'm Gordon Jury is another one. You don't really forget how good a player he was because of the people that he was, you know, McCoy and Lydra. I mean, Jury carried his one year in terms of goals um, when when Ali and Hately were both injured for quite a while. Um, and Jury scored a phenomenal amount of goals and got the base of the number nine jersey for. For a good part of the season, I think that was one of the, the bits he realised. He didn't realise just how good some of the other players in it. He just kind of got used to it. You yeah. know, it's like loud drop. Oh, yeah, yeah okay, right. We know about him. And he came in, my God, how good is this guy? You know, and he's some of the goals he scored and the, the entertainment from him. You know, and then obviously Gaza was just uh, just phenomenal, absolutely yeah. phenomenal. But uh, what I always liked when the foreigners came in, like Sir Halberts, we mentioned it. That the ones that come in and really get it, yeah, you know, and, and they, they've not just been been great, but they really get the club and um, big amateur. So I loved him as well, you know, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal. Uh, love, you know, and you saw when he when he was leaving the club, you know, he's he's cut the Scottish Cup final, scores a winning goal, but you can see that you know the emotion and stuff. And I, I always. Look back in different different form players that come in that probably didn't know an awful lot about Rangers at the time, and then and then you find that they're uh, you know they really they really get it, and they're obviously you look at Alberts, just Rangers died in the rule, you know. Mad how how, how these time. guys take Phenomenal it. Phenomenal times, eh? You know, um, the 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 talk about obviously Gascoigne and McCoy, eh, Gascoigne and Loudrop, etc. McCoy's not. We spoke to to David Roberts as I said, and David said that. Kind of comparison to Walter's setting spell in charge, where we almost won the UEFA Cup despite having a, you know, a, no offence to the squad, but in comparison to like Gascoigne and Loudrop, etc., it was reduced yeah. in quality. But I think David Robertson turned around and said that when when we were going to places like Juventus and Borussia Dortmund and that, Walter Smith was still playing the same way as he would in Scotland. So so Gaza and my, uh, Gaza and Loudrop had their free role, and the rest had to plug gaps. Now when you're playing party this at Ibrox on Saturday. The rest can probably <laughs> plug the gaps, you know. Yes. But when you're up against UV and you're up against Bruce Dortmund and Ajax, etc., these things it's a lot harder, obviously, you know, for for a, for a team to do that. What can you remember about the European runs that, that, that we had, obviously, coming up against the teams that I've, that I've mentioned because they were best in Europe at the time, you know? Yeah, well, again, you got you got used to, uh, to you know, you're going to be in the, in the European Cup or the Champions League pretty much every year. Uh, back in those days, you get used to all the, the, the big teams coming to. Day box and I, it, it did get a wee bit, you know, almost get a bit kind of fed up, getting getting gubbed right. at times. Um, the Juventus won, the, you know, four 0 and four one. I think the, the two games and um, I remember Bayern Munich giving it a going over at, at Ibrox one night as well. And um, I think that's obviously where the where they, they went down the the Dutch route with with Agricat and obviously yeah. things kind of got a bit better in in that respect. Um, yeah, possibly you know you you go back and you, and you think what you know why didn't we we do or just that that bit better in Europe? But then obviously um, the the run in in uh, ninety two ninety three you yeah. know obviously beating Leeds and obviously getting the, the carry on in Marseille and um, that could well have been. Certainly, a year getting to the to the final, yeah. so the the ability was there, it? and I think the really interesting part, and it's kind of ties in with what you're talking about there, is that the that ninety two ninety three run that was the when we had the three foreigners rule, yeah. So there was eight Scots in your in your team, um, and then obviously the you know so you mentioned you had Gaza, Lloydrops, etc., and, and it still didn't quite get there. But back that 
that year with you know, it's just your your eight Scott eight Scots and then you had you had Hately, um Dale Gorman played a wee bit, Peter Hooster played a wee bit. But they apart from Hately, you know, maybe Trevor Stephen, you know, so you had eight Scots really the nucleus of your team. Yeah. Your whole back your back five, you know, including including the, the goalie was was all Scottish players, your midfielders and um were, you know, was heavily uh, run by the, the Scottish players. Um and then obviously when you know mentioned the, the run later on when uh, when Walter took us to Manchester, you know, completely different type of type of football if you like. But um but again that was a, a nucleus of of, um, of Scottish players as well. Yeah. I I don't know I'd, I'd like to have seen maybe if Walter had adopted that kind of cautious approach first time yeah. run. I think Rangers maybe would have done something, you know, because we definitely had the talent there that if the if the tactics kind of maybe favoured the allowed up in a gas coin rather than just giving them a free roll just to actually get the best out of them and still be able to be kind of mm-hmm. compact. I, I think Walter maybe would have done it for us, you know, and, and I listened to guys like Heart and Hand and stuff like that and they've ran a series on, on Walter his first time at the club and his second time at the club and it's amazing just how many guys, I mean, when 2007 when Gwen left, to me, when there was talk of Walter coming back, it was, right, Walter Smith, we need to get him back. He's a legend, he's a hero. Yeah. The only person that I believe that could go into that dugout and be cut and make us win the league like that is Walter Smith. I don't, I don't know, yeah. he just got it about him. Yeah. These Some of the older generation were turning around and saying, no, he's tactically naive in Europe. Now he I has know. to do it tactically because we've not got the money we had. Walter wouldn't be suited. That amazes yeah. me. Do you know what I mean? That There was a point yeah. to that. I know, and yeah, I mean, yeah, you can look back in the in the in the first spell and say, yeah, we, we, we should have done better in Europe. But, yeah, but you also look at the trophy hall, no, you know. So um, there's and there's also there's also been plenty of games where uh, where they dug out results as well from from their character, that, um, and obviously the, the the tactical side of it as well. But no, I think he did show himself to be. Um, even smarter and even better manager in the, the second spell. I mean, he, he, the first thing he did when he came in was saying David Weir and um, Ugo Egiog. Yeah. Because they were, you know, the defence was an absolute shambles under Le Guin. And uh, when, you know, nay, nay height and no physicality in it. I mean, get that. for me, the guy just hadn't done any, hadn't done enough homework in Scottish yeah. football. I mean, it's, it was all pretty tippy tappy football and some played some nice stuff, but. And he just didn't get the thing, and obviously, you know, uh, he didn't get the the idea that, that Rangers, you know, the, the expectation is to win every 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 game, you know. And well, came in, and any, and I think a great thing he did as well is the place needed a lift when you have that, and and I kind of feel, you know, because we'll touch on it, and probably in a wee while, but I feel the same thing when Gerard came in, the place yeah. needed a lift. So when the place is down like that, Le Guin's, I mean, it was brutal some of the results, and yeah. and. Uh, Falling out with the players and falling out with players that are that are that are Rangers men as well. It's not. It's going to be. It's going to be tough to tough to overcome that. And that's shown that the Rangers guys, because obviously the Rangers guys get it, you know. Mm. And um, it's a Barry and Moiri and that are, are uh, you know they get the the get the shirt and get the badge and and like when obviously it's not quite it was it, wasn't, it just wasn't happening. So when Walter comes in, he brings in McCoy as well to the place. It gets a the place gets that, that lift, you know, Kenny McDowell came in and did a cracking job with them as well. But first thing he did was showed up the showed up the defence. And Carlos Coella comes in, brilliant, you know, and completely changed the the, the foot. I mean we would you would play play against uh, you know whoever at Ibrox on a Saturday, um a completely different style of football yep. compared to, you know, and then you know when Barcelona came to Get me Ibrox never and never scored. Messi called it anti football. So, well, what do you want us to do? I know. You know, if we came out and try and, try and get in your penalty box, you're going to pick us off. <laughs> I think we were either the only team or the or the one of the years we we, we went to Old Trafford and got a nil nil. Yeah. And we, were, we were either the only team or there was only one other team in any competition that stopped Man United scoring at Old Trafford right. that year. I just read that the other day. Is that right? Uh-huh. I, I remember that. I mean, that was, you know. Guys that were, you know, cut blood foot and, and you know, playing in it in the defence and you know, right back and centre half. But guys like him, Dami, Kevin Thompson, phenomenal in, in, in those in those positions. You know, me yeah. natural come in and, and give you that wee spark up front. Boydie 
played all. I mean, scoring for fun in the you know uh, in the league, but wasn't suited to the to the one up front playing Darsville maybe mm-hmm. gave you gave you seventy minutes. You know, so it, it was a it was a great it was a great experience. You know, and, uh, I mean, oh, it wasn't pleasing on the eye, but you do, you play with what you've got. You know, you you, you can. There's no point. We never got to the we never got to Manchester to try to play another way. No. You know, and and I don't I don't get the people that say, oh, we got to Manchester, and, and you know, you know, and and I, we should have we should have had a go at, at St Petersburg. You know, well, no, they would have hammered us. <laughs> we got there by doing what we did, right. and it, it was the same tactics. It's always been the same tactics in the final. I mean, this is right. a team that had hammered Bayern Munich a, a few weeks previously. Right. You know, right. so I don't understand when folk uh, folk will say, oh, we, should, oh, we should have had a go. You know, because it would have been. That just uh, you know, so you do all your all your good work to get there, and then uh, and then suddenly change it all. I, I, I never under never I think, quite got that. But. I think Kuzan being suspended was huge for us because Dan, Daniel Kuzan would have been yeah pff, unbelievable in that final. You know, he, he was a great player on his day, and I think the problem with, with Daniel was trying to get him on his day more often than he was not You know, aye, but aye. but the big man great player when he was interested. Aye. Aye. What a, a good player. player when he wanted to be. I I mean. The semi final summed him up when he got shook a leg himself saying off. Aye. I mean, that Aye. just, uh, that was absolutely, absolute madness. Aye. You know? uh, what, what, I can't talk to a, a Rangers supporter really without asking, where were you in Helicopter Sunday? Can you remember the, the event? Which one? The Hibs one. <laughs> the, the Hibs one. The Hibs one. The Hibs one. I was exactly where any Rangers supporter would want to be. I was in the Rangers end of Easter Road. Oh. <laughs> oh, must be bedlam, man. Uh, oh, it was the most <laughs> surreal moment, wasn't it? Standing there, you know, drove through and we were like, right, just just make sure you win the game. You know, at least don't, you know, if Celtic made a mess of this, just make sure Rangers win the game. Uh, there was no regrets in that respect. And we natural scored and, you know, you've so all seen the thing. You've, the most surreal game of football, because one nil suited Hibs. <laughs> You know, they were getting into Europe with we, we one long as they didn't get gubbed. So they were like going across the halfway line. Didn't matter if we scored another goal. So it was like we weren't like, going across the halfway line either. The ball was just getting passed about. And uh, it was just, and then just kind of, it was pretty, pretty kind of quiet, really. Obviously, but you're, you're looking at it and it's like, well, that's quarter two. That's time's up. And it was like you just like somebody flicked a switch <laughs> and the place went mental with it. Earlier on, we knew early doors obviously Celtic had scored, and then the Hibs fans had they had obviously as, as a wind up had started a wee while later. Maybe this is still in the first half. Started jumping up and down, um, giving it to us. And we're like, oh, shit, that must be two nothing, and it wasn't. It was only one, you know. And so even when the when obviously the the Rangers, it was, it was just like flicking a switch. It, you'd I think I thought you had just watched the goal and yeah. and. Obviously not everybody's on their phone and the radios and all that kind of stuff. So you're like, wait, is it is this real? Um, and you know, like, oh my god, it was just like shock. And it was like, and obviously the filter through the players. And uh, I think it was uh, by Dado. He, he at one point that the ball was up, actually came up to towards the Rangers end, and he didn't bother going back onto the park. He was almost in. And and with us behind the goal, and I was like, you could see McLeese kind of shouting, "I'm like, get back on the park!" And, then, yeah, um, and of course, then the second goal goes up, and we think that's full time, um, but it's not. And I think if I remember right, like, the way it worked, the way that even though it, so if, if Hibs had obviously the, the game was still going, um, even with Celtic getting beat two one, if Hibs had scored, I think that would have that would have changed that again. Um. So it wasn't quite. Done. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure, sure that was it. Right, I may be wrong. I'm sure that was the case. Oh, I think you're right. Eh? The, the the second goal, we are thinking it's full time. Do you know? And it's not. It's 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 two one. It's like, oh, it's two one. And then you're like, oh god, what does that mean? Everybody's <laughs> like, you know, what? Everybody's at, and then, oh, and of course the final whistle when it was oh, just <laughs> absolutely incredible. I mean, I mean, it wasn't I mean, uh, the the previous one with with Don, Don Fairman. I was actually I was playing down at Wentworth at the the, um, the PGA uh, Volvo PGA Championship. I was driving my hire car to Heathrow on the phone to my old man who was talking <laughs> me through all the goals, and and he's the worst commentator in the world. Uh, you know, Arteta, Arteta's penalty, he must have he must have had a run up for about five minutes going over <laughs> old man's commentary. It was horrendous. 
<laughs> um, so the difference to be obviously to be in there, and I say that was back in the days I was going to all the games and um, being in there was just a uh, uh, frightening, incredible. I mean, some of one of the, f- the few times you're actually genuinely standing there um, in tears yeah. at a football match, you know, yeah. just uh, um, you know, and, and you look back and uh, what, what McLeish uh, brought. You know, I've got some of the couple of the best days that a Rangers fan could could ever experience. You know, the trophies that he managed to win and and uh, cut, you know the cup finals and But those two leagues were well, were just uh, that day was just well, incredible. The weird incredible. thing, the, I wasn't at Easter Road, right? But the, I was at Ibrox and the, the Dunfermline man. I thought about and the weird thing that the Dunfermline man was because they had scored. Dunfermline had scored and we were winning three one at half time. They were winning the league. You know, because it was all goal difference, it was all come down to goal yep. scored, etc. And you're thinking, one right. goal for them could could cover it for us, even if we win handsomely, you know. I know. And and to actually feel Ibrox and it was so deflated at half time because they had scored we three one up, but they had scored and we're going yeah. and I think they were three <laughs> up and you're thinking, dear yeah. oh dear and then obviously De Boer scores last and hits the post at the same time. Thompson skies a penalty, you see the guy in the crowd going, He's missed it, he's missed it and it's just, what a day, you know, they both days were oh. tremendous. But <laughs> Yeah, again, we still had some phenomenal. You know, you still had some cracking, cracking players um, back then. Obviously, and it was, and you mentioned De Boer and Avalazi, etc. You know, the yeah. first time, then obviously, then the second time, Big Dado, what a player he was. You know, yeah. he was a, a battering ram. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and obviously things just started to, to slide a bit. But I mean, to get those titles were were. Uh, were uh, incredible. I, but that's up there with the great, you know, the, the Easter Road game was up there with the best uh, experiences I've ever had for long yeah. days or something. Yeah. Um, oh, you touched on Gerard bringing into the, the present day. He's obviously had two years in charge now. I would say major progress has been made. We've still got a bit to go, but major progress has been made. How would you sum up Stephen Gerrard's time in, in charge of the club? No, absolutely. I said, I, I, I would totally agree. I mean, if there's massive progress has been made. I, you know, who spent a few quid without going mental. They uh, obviously had to spend what they did to get Ryan Kent, which I think has held him back. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know he's not he's not brought he's not spent that money on him uh, for a gamble. I think he knows he's, he will come. He will come good. Uh, obviously, the current situation might might you know make a, a, an effect on the transfers this this summer. You know, all with you know brought in Hadji, which was. Which is, uh, I think he'll be, I think he'll be a cracker and get a few quid on him going forward. But no, he's made huge uh, progress. I said at the time, you know, we we needed a after all the kind of carry on with the way things worked out with the uh, different managers and fallouts, etc. I think um, you know, Gerard came in and the, the place needed a lift. Yeah. And yes, he obviously didn't have the managerial experience, but a, a guy of that caliber. Uh, to come in the place needed a lift and they absolutely they absolutely did that and, um, but I think you know obviously this season he's going to be I think he's got to win something this season I mean I think we need to also remember that I'm sure on the in terms of the, the wage structure we're probably still well behind uh, yeah. behind Celtic so to expect to win the league is, I mean as much as we, we, we do want these things you know I think the bigger picture is is uh, is that we're still progressing. Um, to be honest, with you, I could, I'm couldn't really care less about nine, ten, or eight and a half. And you know, obviously, I mean, this year's never never been a title. Um, and uh, so, you know, what they do, I'm not really that bothered. The fact is that we are getting better. We've got great guys in the boardroom. Um, behind the scenes, backing everything, you know, and, and the way the the way things are running now, it's back to back to what you would you would you would expect at, at, at our club, and, yep. and 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 Gerard carries himself that way. He speaks so well, yep. you can tell that he totally gets it. You know, he, he's always he's always he might, he's always got the you know the shot and tying it and the blazer on the on the on the touchline. Um, he gets the club and. You know he's uh, he's he's a good guys behind him as well. So I, I'm very very confident he'll bring success. I think this year you know there has to be um, silverware, but I hope I really do hope that if 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 it doesn't work out this year, that we still stick by him because I really do think he can he can take us back there. And yeah. as I said, keep remembering that we're not 
we're still not paying the same wages as what Celtic are, and we've yeah. not had the, you know, the the Champions League money, etc. So I mean, and it's not that long ago that we were playing in the Scottish Championship, mm-hmm. um, and the, the guys of you know the guys behind the scenes of have, have uh, brought us to you know the other you look at us and um, after the, the game in December there we were we were effectively effectively top of the league. What happened after that? I've no idea. Sure um, that. <laughs> that's a bamboozling one. Um, but you know, this 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 the squad needs a bit a bit of strength, and um, and uh, I think we need I think we need probably at least three or four players that are going to come into the team now, not fringe players. And I thought look, last last season we looked at the bench at the start of the season. I thought, oh, this is going to be better, mm-hmm. you know, because I thought we've got a, a squad here of guys that can come on and change the game. And come on and and create those you know create that wee spark that we need, but none of them to be honest with you, are, are probably good enough. There's yep. too many players on the fringes there that you know you could you could look look to the bench and say right here's a here's a, a forward or forward to wide player that might come on and make a, a wee difference. And you could have chucked on any one of four or five, and it probably no, haven't really not. quite no. no. Um, so a wee bit of, uh, a wee bit of dig in the middle of the park as well. So I think we need somebody a, a bully in the in the middle of the park. We bit you know, we Ryan Kent to start firing. If Alfie's still gonna be about, hopefully the way the hopefully the way the world is just now actually might help us keep yeah. keep him for another year. Um Defoe hopefully can, you know, um, keep himself fit, but they need help as well. Yeah. So uh, I think we're we're three or four uh kind of First team players, you know, starters. I feel like yep, I away from from being, from being uh, from being pretty good. But but you know, it's just as long as we keep making progress. So the fair go end up and and win another couple of league titles. Obviously, as much as it, you don't want to see that, it's a, it's a, it's about us keeping and getting better. And it's not for me. It's, it's not that long ago we were since we were we were playing in the bottom the bottom leagues. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and don't have to remind you some of the players that we had then. <laughs> dear, dear man. Wow, I never want to relive that nightmare again. <laughs> <laughs> that was mad. Uh, <laughs> obviously, you as, as a professional golfer, I mean, as a Rangers supporter, I feel as though we wear our club as a badge of honour. You know, I'm, I'm a Rangers supporter, I'm proud to be a Rangers supporter, and I don't care who knows it. Yeah. For, for yourself, obviously, in a professional capacity, how does that, because I know even in my work, in, in my line of work, I, I need to try and keep it on the down low a wee bit, you know, because it's, it's no professional, etc. What, what about yeah. for yourself? Is it is? Did you ever find it hard to, to turn around and say, "Well, no, actually, I'm a Rangers supporter." No, what my kind of opinion was for for, for you know most of my uh, kind of adult life, if you like, I was traveling, traveling the world playing golf. So, yeah. um, as you're when you when you go abroad, it's obviously it's a it's a lot less intense. In Scotland, we have this thing. It's like it seems to be it, it, it's fine to support everybody by Rangers. I don't yeah. you know. At the end of the day, it's a football team. Yep. And if you know, I look at the the, the 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 guys on the you know golfers on the European tour. Would everybody talks about their, their English team? You know, English, like Ian Poulter, who's a big Arsenal fan, right? Yeah. Rory McIlroy, a Man United fan. You know, um, Thomas Beyond, a Liverpool fan. You know, and so what's the difference of being that between mm-hmm. maybe an Rangers fan? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, so. I kind of start, you know, the, the the kind of football, but getting started getting noticed a wee bit um, as I kind of obviously uh, started playing a, a better level of golf and people have been said so I was always going to the games, home and away when I when I was at home um, on my profile on the European tour. It's you know other interests. I will main other interests is going to watch Rangers. So uh, that was you know. Uh, so it's up to other people whether they, if what they what they, they say about it. Definitely over the years, you know, you look at it and you think there's it seemed to be more uh, trendy almost really to kind of or oh, such and such as I, I'm a Celtic supporter. And it's like they've probably never been a part in their life, but um, and maybe there's less well-known Rangers fans out there or for, for whatever reason, you know, it's just people need to keep it kind of a wee bit quieter, but. In it, so it's a football team. Support a football team. I'm not exactly. doing anything wrong. Exactly. And uh, I find that you know, I, I kind of, you know, like so when I was playing on tour, traveling, I was, I had like, a, uh, there was a guy came up to me and gave me a business card, um, who who does like these like, like 
head covers for your, your clubs and your woods and things yeah. like that, or football clubs. He says, if you're looking for any Rangers stuff, I oh, brilliant. So I dropped an email and he sent me some stuff. So I had like, a Rangers head cover and things like that on my on one of my clubs and I'm using Rangers, the wee, the wee ball markers and say coin and things like that. Playing back, you know, playing stuff just back home now. I don't, I don't do that because you'll just wind up the wrong person and it, it can create a, an atmosphere. But no, I would never ever uh, uh, hide the, the fact that you're, you know it's your, it's your team, isn't it? You know, yeah. and and that's uh, that's what you do. We go to games or we watch and uh, you know trying to catch traveling the world, trying to catch up with the results. Or you know, I said ten years ago, trying to watch something online was yeah. was was pretty difficult so you try to find the the local the local pub that maybe showed the showed a bit of football and things like that you know trying to trying to find games and find something you just had to have you just had to get text through the phone yeah. um but you know obviously nowadays it's, it's completely different but no it was, it was it's just what you was what, just telling the truth yeah. you know what would you, what'd you do out say the golf well i go and watch rangers you know yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I worked with, with mark warren's dad and Mark Warren's obviously a big range supporter as well, and mm. I kind of got the vibe. And I've never, I've never met Mark, but I kind of got the vibe for, for his dad that no, you're a Rangers supporter. It's, you can't that's, hide that, you know. It's that's right. That's what you are, and that's it. That's right. I remember the, the night we, when we we were playing the playing in the Italian Open. The um, the night we when we got through against Fiorentina, yeah, uh, from Manchester, and, and so obviously you're an hour ahead playing golf in the morning, so you're maybe up the road quite early. And uh, and they were in Italy, so Italian telly. We've got the game on. We've got the game, so I'm lying, I'm lying, lying on top of my bed watching the watching the game, and and uh, obviously when they've got the Italian commentary, and obviously when Nacho scores a penalty, you go and jump about the hotel room, going going mad, you know, and I, and I can I can hear another uh, bedlam kind of next door. We're down for breakfast in the morning, and Mark's sitting there, and the two of us just looked at each other and like, "I'll be through the wall for each other, eh?" So he he was he was next door, <laughs> and the two of us were going uh, going absolutely bananas, you know. <laughs> um, so the two of us managed to actually get. We played the the final was was uh, during it was a Wednesday night of the Irish Open, yeah, and we were down in 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 Cork. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but we managed to we we did a a, a wee deal we get and we might between a few of us there was a couple of, Jamie Goff who's Richard Goff's brother mm -hmm. he's actually a coach golf coach on the European tour and one or two others there was about six of us I think we hired um, Darren Clark and Lee Westwood on the private jet at the time and we managed to do a deal with them we all chipped in together. And we played in a pro arm on the Wednesday morning in Cork. Uh, didn't bother putting my Rangers top on until I got to the game. <laughs> didn't I cut the book Cork, my Rangers top on. And we, 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 f we flew from Cork to Manchester to, for the game. Manchester back to Cork. We back, actually back in the hotel, back in my bed by midnight <laughs> after, the, after the game and played the, the first round of the Irish Open the, the, next, the next morning. That's bad. Um, great. You just wonder, I mean, it could be a likely to discover once in a lifetime. Yeah. So it was like, you know, how could we, how could we manage this? Don't want to, Irish Open's a big tournament. Um, don't want to miss this. Well, here's a way we could, uh, <laughs> we could actually do this. You know, the things you do, this is, uh, it's, it's madness, but it's, it's, it's what you do, isn't it? That's it. That's you it. Know, it's what you do. Club and you go and, and you I, said Manchester was a once in a lifetime opportunity, so you, you had to, you know, and, and I totally yeah. understand you guys, and and it's even most. I mean, you think a supporter sometimes, and people goes like, well, "Football isn't everything." I, we know that, <laughs> but there you professionals playing in a, a professional that's tournament, right. and you're <laughs> flying away, you go, you know what I mean? It's that's just it. mad. That's it. Uh, that's the thing. That's right. The thing you do. I mean, I mean, I'm driving, driving through the night, getting back to somewhere, and. I actually missed a cut, I think it was in Italy, and I couldn't get back. And it was just, this was in the bottom division. I think it was the, the day we were getting the, the trophy. And obviously, I'd been to all the games all season. I'd missed a yeah. cut in Italy, and I couldn't get back to Scotland. I couldn't get a flight. Uh, and I managed to get a flight on the, I could get a flight to Gatwick on the Friday night. I got to Gatwick about 1 o'clock the Friday night, and hired a car, and drove up the road from, from Gatwick, dumped a hire car at Glasgow Airport, and then off to the off to the pub for a couple of beers before the game. I thought, well, I'd been, 
I've been at all the all the games all season. It says yeah. it was my pretty dire at times. I thought, well, you know, we've we've got the the day that we're actually going to get the trophy and might have something to just actually have a, a, a good day of it. So it's what you do, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's it. what you do. It's uh, that's it. simple as that. That's it. I thought it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you again. I think there's still a million one things that I've wrote down that I haven't covered <laughs> either, so apologies for that. But um, no it's been great talking to you again, fellow Rangers supporter. Yeah. Hopefully, next year we're all celebrating 55 and well, I'll get back to normal. <laughs> I don't think we're far away, I don't think we're far away, but we just uh, stick with it, you know, yeah. stick with it. It's uh. It's in your blood. It's so it's um it's just what we do. We keep turning up, but I think we're I think we're getting we're getting close. There's no question we're on the right lines, and that's the that's the main thing. If it takes another couple of years, it takes another couple of years, but we'll we'll get there for for sure. Yeah, this is the our, uh, progress over the last few years has been has been brilliant. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Thanks very much again. Thanks Good for your pleasure. time. Cheers. Pleasure. Stay safe. Anytime at all. All the best. Thanks a lot.